Um, hello, everybody. Um, we're Team Internet Everything. My name is Yifei. Our teammates are Guo Liang, Chongfa, and Shu. Today, we're going to demonstrate our smart IoT home automation system. So the reason why we want to build this system is because the current existing IoT system in the market are expensive, hard to use, and uh, lack of custom customizations. So we particularly focus on these problems and uh, make our IoT system uh, more uh, reliable, more cost effective, and more, uh, much easier to use, and uh, more compatible with third party systems. So in our case, we are able to adapt uh, Apple HomeKit to allow us to use mobile control and audio control. The, com the communication protocol we used is called MQTT. So basically, this protocol enables us to um, em enable each component to either subscribe or um, post data. So um, to, to subscribe and post stuff on a certain topic, so that the message can be updated much effectively. So. As you can see, the systems consist of um, a Raspberry Pi over here as the MQTT broker, and several Node MCU microcontrollers as the MQTT publisher and subscribers. And on each board, we also have different sensors to collect different kind of data, and also some um, smart appliances like the smart curtain over there and uh, the smart fan over here. In our final result. Um, the users can the users can control the um, behavior of the four lights. They can turn it on and off, and uh, they can also control the behavior of the smart fan, including control its speed. And also, the smart curtain can be controlled by telling how far it's going to travel to. And uh, on the other hand, the users can also receive the alcohol concentration value and also hear alert if the concentration gets too high. Also, the um, motion sensor is going to detect if there's a suspect movement in the house. It's going to notify the users immediately. All right, so now Shu is going to talk about the software aspect of the system. So. You can see the software stack on the diagram. So MQTT is the most important software part in our system. And MQTT requires three parts, a broker, subscriber, and publisher. And uh, there on Node MCU, there is a library called pub sub client library. Uh, this, uh, the message from this library and MQTT Homebridge is both publisher and subscriber because they can send a message and receive message. And the message from the library will send, uh, send to, to the broker running on our Raspberry Pi, which is Eclipse Mosquito. And uh, the broker will send a message to Homebridge, uh, which is the communication system in our IoT design. And the uh, home bridge will serve as an interface to communicate with Apple HomeKit, so users can get directly, uh, directly access to the data using Apple HomeKit. And uh, also, we use a lot of libraries to support our OLED ED screen, uh, screens, uh, smart application, and sensor to work. And uh, these three components have different frequency of sending data. So uh, Chongfang will talk about details of this hardware. Okay, so for the, for the hardware part, uh, first we got the Raspberry Pi. You will just need to connect the power and Wi-Fi, and then we got the node MCUs, we got three of them. And uh, every node MCU will require a OLED screen to display information, such as the IP address, the status of the sensors, and the status of the smart appliances. And this one is our temperature and humidity node. And it will connect to a HTURX sensor by using the I2C protocol. And it allow us to read the information of the temperature and humidity from the sensor. 
and then we got the gas and motion sensor. And this node can read the output from the gas sensor by using the GPIO. And it can use the ADC to read the can use the ADC to read the concentration of the alcohol gas. And uh, for the motion sensor, it can detect the movement like in this room within the range of seven meters. And for our last smart appliance node, it controls four LED lights, it's right here, and uh, one smart fan and one smart curtain. And for the smart fan, it's basically a DC motor which is driven by the PWM output. And for the smart curtain, it's driven by a thermal motor. And now Guo Liang will talk about the engineering challenge. Yep, so the challenge for this system <coughs> is to send and receive data more complex, reliably. Each the sensor are not that powerful, can't really do much stuff, but to make sure they can reliably send the message, we have to design a scheduling system to keep sending data until we actually, like the uh, Raspberry Pi actually received it. And uh, another challenge is building the house itself. As you can see, it looks pretty. I'm proud of it. I'm proud of my teammates. Yep, so let's just jump ahead to the demonstration. We've been talking too much. So here is our interface, the not our interface, the Apple HomeKit's interface. And then you can see right now one of the lamp is turned on because we set up an automation where if there's any motion in the room, the lamp will turn on. I can turn it off right now. It takes some time for the motion sensor to pick up and turn on the light, but I can manually turn on other three lights. If you, can, if you guys can see it, I can rotate that a little bit. So on the interface, you can see right here. So I can turn on the lamp light, and then the light, each light, will turn on. So that's basically manually turn on and off the lights. And then for, for the fans, yeah, we can turn that on as well. And, and also we can change the speed of the fan. I don't know if you guys can hear it a little bit. Slow down and then turn off. And then the most amazing part in this is our little smart curtain. We can close it <laughs> and open it up. Yeah, so those are all the smart appliances in the system. There's the humidity and temperature node will read the temperature and the humidity in this room. So right now it's in 26.5 degrees Celsius and 50% humidity. It's very a little bit warm and humid side. Since it was raining pretty more like the last week pretty much. So it's very humid in this room. And also there's the motion sensor. So it says, oh, motion sensor is triggered. That's because the sensor can sense like any motion in this room within a seven meters range. So yeah, <laughs> uh, it doesn't really tell much other than like, yes, it's detected motion. And then also we have a smart, uh, not really smart, but smoke smoke uh, sensor right here. Let, let me close out the curtain to show you this part of the automation. Yeah, so we set up an automation where if the alcohol sensor detects a level higher than the threshold, it will send a signal to our system and then the automation will turn on the fan and then open up the curtain. So let's try that one. Yep, so when it detects it, it will light up a green light on the sensor and then it will send a signal. And actually, um, in our home kit, all of our teammates' phone have hooked up to this home, home. And then we all get a small notification that there's a smoke detected in this room. And then when the smoke is gone, after one minute, all the home uh, smart appliance will turn off. So the fan will turn off after a minute. And as I said, we have the motion sensor that hook up to the lamp. I just manually turn it off, but as you can see, it's turned on back again because it sends the motion in this room, so it will turn it back on. So the advantage of our system is very customizable. Then we have 10 smart things here, so four light, a DC fan, a curtain, and four, or you can count it, three sensors here. We can add any sensor we want into our system by simply adding more node MCU and more sensors. Each of the node MCU is very cheap. It's like less than $4. It's super cheap, it's very affordable. 
it, it doesn't take much time to set up. And so it, like we, adding a new sensor take about like a few lines of code and then you can change it. So it's very easy to set up and um, very cheap, very easy to set up, easy to use. That's our project. And yeah, that's it. And probably not going to show the other part, but that should be it. Any questions? Yeah, of course. You mentioned that part. So, yep. Yeah. So, uh, this is the curtain. It's uh, fully open right now. Yeah. Let's uh, nice. cover it fifty percent. Cover like, like almost covered, and fully covers okay. it. Yeah. Can, can you dim the lights too? Uh, so, uh, like the Node MCU is not really uh, like powerful enough to power all of those stuff. Yeah. So. We could choose to power all of those lights using PWM yeah. controls, but it's just not capable of controlling yeah. so many things. Okay. Yep. So, so can you program it to say add another feature, like you have the temperature and humidity, could you also program it to, if it's above a certain temperature, to turn on the fan? So Apple HomeKit doesn't allow that, but we can use third-party apps to do that kind of automation because the main reason is, so the reason we have three, sen uh, three node MCUs here is not because of like we just want to use it, because they are running on different schedules. So for the smart appliance node, the first one, it's a, basically a passive sensor. It doesn't really like uh, send out any information until it reaches a command. So okay. it doesn't send anything, basically. It's silent, remains silent most of the time. And then once I turn on the light, it will, oh, light is turned on. So it will send the message until then. In the middle is the temperature one. It's a periodic scheduling. So it will send out a message every 30 seconds, no matter what. So like, you can't really control those stuff, like temperature and humidity. You can't really control it that way. So it just passively, every 30 seconds, send out the message. Every 30 seconds, send out the message. And then for this one, the smoke sensor and motion sensor, those, this node is action-based. So if there's any signal in this room, so for example, if it detects alcohol, then immediately it will send out two to three times of the message. So, oh, I'm out, I, I detect smoke, I detect smoke, I detect smoke, to ensure that our Raspberry Pi can like, receive that. But other than that, it doesn't really send out that much of information. Same for the motion sensor. Every time it detects motion, it will send out, oh, there's motion, there's motion, there's motion, and then it will stop. Mm -hmm. Yep, so fundamentally those three nodes are running in different schedule. Yep. Any other questions? Great, great. Thank you guys so much.